guys, Tina from Target Tanners. Thanks for tuning in. Today we are reviewing the Maven CS1 spotting scope. All right, so what you'll get is a box that looks like this. That's the actual sleeve to the box that holds the goods. Now, what I really like about Maven packaging and about how the spotting scope came was that this foam insert is actually fitted to the spotting scope. So you can reuse the box as you need for storage when you're not using the spotting scope. Now it does come inside and with a Maven branded microfiber drawstring bag. You've also got a lens cloth and an instructional pamphlet. Now to the spotting scope itself. We've got 15 to 45 times magnification, a 65 millimeter objective lens. You have the focus collar here and a rotating knob right here. Okay, so this thing weighs 40.4 ounces. It's 11.4 inches long. This is the definition of compact and travel companion optic for hunting, bird watching, really anything that you need a spotting scope for. You can see this has an angled design. I'm partial to straight spotting scopes. I feel that they're faster and easier to use, but the angle is really good for a bird watching when you're watching the skies or looking up along ridges. Um, and it's also really good for when multiple users of different heights are using the same spotting scope in any activity that you are doing. So it works perfectly for those needs. All right, now let's talk a little bit more about its applications. Bird watching, awesome. Awesome, I could clearly identify and see colors on birds um, at various distances. Now, the only thing was really long range. It was really difficult to achieve ultimate sharpness and clarity um, with color fidelity at max magnification for extended long ranges. Now, I would assume that that would also be true for, especially if you're hunting in the Western Plains, um, when you need miles long, information on whether you want to go scout that way, whether there's a herd that way, um, you just might not get the all the detail that you need. So a uh, 65 times, 80 times power scope probably would do the job for Western hunters for extended long range use. Bird watching, great. Uh, waterfowl hunting, great. You know, if you're hunting in somewhere on the east side where you're in thick timber, that 15 to 45 times magnification is going to be overkill by far. A compact pair of binoculars would more than do. But as for the spotting scope, I found it was really good for a lot of uses. Low light condition with only the 65 millimeter objective lens, it's not going to be as bright at, at low light versus a larger objective lens like 80 millimeters. Um, but then again, you're not getting the additional weight and size. I found that at 45 times max magnification, the eye box was really tight. Now my Digiscope adapter, the eyepiece lens was just a tad too big to fit my adapter. So everything I did was freehand, which means I put my camera right up to the lens and I had to line it up with the eye box perfectly just to be able to get some images. Now that's really hard to do freehand, the things I do for you guys. But I did manage to get some photos and some footage. You know, even moving the camera an eighth of an inch threw everything off. Now, unfortunately, this does not have an interchangeable eyepiece, so it's not like you can move, use it with a mirrorless camera or anything like that. So you will want a, uh, an adapter that will fit the eyepiece. Okay, now let's talk about its mechanisms. We've got the magnification ring and the focus collar right here. What I really like is it feels really good under the naked fingers. You've got recessed knurling and ultra smooth movement with enough resistance. Really great feeling under the hands. Now with gloves, it might be a little bit tough to recognize that you're actually on the rings because it does not have extruded uh, knurling. But once you get used to using it, you'll be able to feel where you are enough to recognize that you can make adjustments without taking your sights off the eyepiece. Now it also has the rotating collar. Not overly impressed by the knob, works well 
it's a little close to the tripod mount, but it works just fine. I'll show you right here. Kind of goofy trying to do it while looking at the camera, but it does the job, zero issues. What I did notice, which is interesting, on um, the power ring, 15 and 45 times is marked, but in between you've just got circle dots as the magnification references. Not really a big deal at all. Now let's talk about the caps. Eyepiece cap, slim, really flimsy. Does the job though, fits good. The objective lens cap, much more heavier duty. I like it. The only thing I don't like is that it doesn't come tethered like the binoculars do for you to just take it off and it flips down and hangs like that. So the downside to that is because I tend to get my adrenaline running and I take these off and I lose them. So you can always rig your own securing system with Velcro or something like that to keep the, the caps on or you just have to buy replacements if you uh, want that tethered ability. I do recommend using a full-size tripod with the spotting scope if you want maximum image stability. Now this is a tripod I use most of the time out in the field. It has everything I need. The only downside is that it's super lightweight so there was still some wobble at max magnification. What I did instead is I used my camera tripod which is much more heavier duty and that seemed to do the trick perfectly. I was able to keep images stable and still enough to take photographs and film with. Now let's talk a little bit more about my experience with the range use. How did it perform? Excellently. I made up a target with um, so that I could see groupings on black, white, and shoot and see. And the this little tough guy here was able to spot groupings on all three types of targets at 100 yards. So excellent for range use, uh, super easy to pack up, so away, mount to tripod at the range and get up and going. Really good. Now let's talk a little bit more about its price point. At $650, it is a really good deal. Now let me explain that further. $650 is a lot of money for most people. This is a mid-range spotting scope priced at an entry level price point. So it's mid-range quality that only costs hundreds of dollars. Now what you're getting in it versus others that cost less than a thousand dollars is the awesome ED glass quality in it. Uh, phase correction coatings, fully multi-coated coatings. It has the works. It is from the C-series, so it is made in China. It doesn't have that Japanese quality to it like the Maven B-series worth of optics, series of optics but still really good for an affordable option for mid-range performance. Okay, so I did pit the Maven CS1 up against a budget, travel, portable, lightweight spotting scope, the Carson Everglade. Now, the only reason why I did this is because you have the Maven that has 15 or 45 times magnification with a 65 millimeter objective lens. And then you have other similar compact travel spotting scopes with very, very similar specs like the Carson with uh, 15 to 45 times magnification and a 60 millimeter objective lens. Now, a lot of you are going to go online and compare which one is better for you because the the um, cheaper optics will very much appeal to you. But the truth is you really can't compare these two because it's like comparing apples to oranges. What puts the, while the Carson performs very well, um, especially as a handheld optic, but the Maven blows out all of the spotting scopes under a thousand dollars. And that is because of its glass optical quality. You have ED glass face correction coatings, fully multi-coated multi coatings. It has a magnesium and aluminum uh, frame housing. So hopefully it's just as tough and rugged as it is today as it will be uh, several years down the road. So it's really not fair to compare the Maven to other more affordable spotting scopes because it's like comparing apples to oranges.
I really like that the entire scope is portable, uh, travel worthy, excellent glass quality. It absolutely fulfills all the requirements that I have for close to mid range use, which is what the magnification settings are set for. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. Thanks to Maven for sending this out. It is not a keeper. Just so that you all know, it will be sending, it will be sent back to them and I'm not compensated for this review from Maven. It's all my honest opinion. So if you want the nitty gritty on everything I wrote about it, check out the write up review, which is in the description and the link below. If you liked this review, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in with us today, guys. Have a good one.